This is good for both of us. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, so we're here with Rudy Winkler and Tyler Merkley. They just qualified for the final in the men's hammer. Guys, take me through your competition today. How'd you guys feel? Uh, pretty decent, actually. A uh, little season's best, just a little bit. Um, working through some technical stuff, which has been nice. See a little results. Uh, definitely was not firing on all cylinders, so it's cool to get through. It's first major final, which is kind of fun. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been good. Just, just progressing. And yeah, um, felt really good. Feel like my throws are very easy to execute right now. So. It's just about getting some rest and putting something together on Sunday and having a good time. Um, I feel like this is the most fun I've had in a meet all year. So I had like a little weird foot foul on the first one that I tried to protest, but then ended up throwing further anyway, so didn't need to. But yeah, feeling really good, excited for Sunday. So Rudy, you were the top qualifier throwing over 77 meters. You know, you've been here before. You qualified for the trials even in 20, you qualified for the Olympics even in 2016. You've been one of America's most dominant hammer throw over the last several years in the American record. Um, what would a third Olympic Games mean for you if you can qualify on Sunday? I mean, it would mean a lot. Got to get there first. Um, but, you know, a lot goes into doing this with family and friends and everyone making sacrifices and myself obviously making sacrifices to accomplish these things. Um, so the Olympics is obviously like the peak of our sport, so to be able to represent those communities means a lot. Um, and each time you do it, you learn something. So I'm just excited for another opportunity to kind of have a chance to prove myself and pull out something maybe that I'm proud of if I make the team. So uh, yeah, just excited to be around. <laughs> so Tyler, you've been tr you've been transitioning into the professional ranks of the sport. Um, how would you describe the transition from you know a year or two ago to where you're at now competing in the trials? Uh, it's definitely different. It's, it's a little weird at the same time. Like it's weird being in an Airbnb instead of a hotel with a team. Um, but I mean, it's been good. I had a, I had my first kids seven months ago. Uh, getting used to that. So getting used to like a post collegiate life with a kid with you know being married making sure not pissing off my wife too much is it's uh it's like you know juggling way too many balls at the same time but they're all good things right so it's like you can't be mad at anything that's going on but the transition's been pretty decent actually I, I've, I've enjoyed it a lot um we'll just try to find the groove where i'm not taking away too much from personal life because i definitely don't want to be a neglectful father by any means <laughs> but i also really want to throw a ball far so it's like it's a weird balance um, definitely helps to keep things in perspective, but I mean it's been a pretty decent transition. Um, haven't you know got a PB or anything like that this year, but I would say my floor of throws have gone way up, which is like a nice kind of like hidden thing. But you know we're still searching to maybe find a little something special. But it's been good. It's been good. It's interesting but good. So what's going to be the game plan for the next two days leading into the final for you guys? rest, sleep, and do the same thing again on Sunday. So, just do it all again. Pretty much. <laughs> Eat some good food. Okay, last question. The You were talking about how your floor has risen this season, Tyler. I think the floor has risen uh, for the entire uh, event of men's hammer thrower in the United States for the last 10 years. What do you guys think has kind of contributed to, you know, a 74-meter throw might be like, a bronze met might be a medal contention for nationals 10 years ago too. You might see 10 guys or 74 in the same meet. What do you think has led to just like this renaissance in hammer throwing to the US? That's a great question. I mean, we were still saying out there, this is probably the deepest national championship for trials for the US ever. Um, definitely the most guys over 74 and definitely the furthest it's ever taken to make uh, the final. So. Uh, it's exciting. There's a lot of things that go into that. I think like the top end raising has definitely helped, but I think the quality of coaching across the board has just gotten so much better. And part of that's like social media, part of that's just coaches and athletes sharing information and kind of working together. Um, Hammer is a very like throwing in general, but Hammer very specifically is a very community like oriented event. So we're all always like chatting with each other and sharing information. And I think that's just as lifting the whole sport together. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I think just everyone throwing far makes everyone, it's just competition, right? So like everyone throwing farther, definitely that top end. Um, 
where you know you just can't be at the level it once was to be competitive. So you got to find new methods that work for you, or like Rudy said, you know, just reaching out to people, trying to figure stuff out, trying to. And it is nice because I would say within events and track and field throwing in general, but I'd say hammer, like most people are willing to help no matter what level you are. So like I know I've reached out to Rudy for things when I was just a little young pup. Um, so, but it, it's just, it's, it's a good community. So I think, yeah, just, you know, raising tides, raise all ships or whatever the actual saying is. That's exactly it. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nailed it. So I actually have one more question. Um, this might be even tied more to Rudy is um, Ethan Katzberg just threw over 82 meters again this uh, yeah. season at the Canadian trials. Like, what do you, where do you kind of see uh, your mark and chasing what's going on in the world right now, especially in the West? You know, we established how the U.S. is improving the hair, but now Canada's right up there yeah. as well, and the men and the women. You know, are you kind of looking over to him, looking up north, being like, I want that NACAC record, you know? I mean, it broke my heart a little when he broke it. I think I still have the furthest throw by a North American on North American soil. Um, not that that means anything that's like saying, oh, I had the world record thrown on a Tuesday. Um, <laughs> but it, Ethan is a really interesting case. And I think the, the level across the board worldwide has been going up the past couple of years. Um, I think the Olympics is going to take over 80 meters to get top six. Um, I don't think that's unreasonable. And I think there's so many people right now that are capable of throwing 80. It feels very reminiscent of like, the early 2000s or even like 80s, 90s when everyone was throwing 80. Um, the nice thing is far less drug use now than there was in those days, so it's nice knowing that people like Ethan are doing it in a clean system. And he's specifically interesting just because it's like, he's a machine, his coach, the level of detail and like monitoring and everything that goes into their training is just so precise and calculated and he's just a really nice dude. I love competing with him and hanging out with him so it's really nice seeing someone at the top getting better and better and better and actually like being a decent person while doing it too. Um, so it's interesting and I think too it's the same thing within the US where when the top end raises the rising tide raises all ships. <laughs> well, that. Ships are raising. Ships are raising. So um, just like how that's happening in the U.S., it's happening worldwide too. So it's awesome that it's happening with really young dudes, Ethan and like Misha Khan and um, Ben Salas, really young guys who are all throwing super far and raising the bar for everybody. Okay, guys, that's it. Thank you so much. I really Thanks, appreciate Jason. it. Thanks. Appreciate it.